Uh, welcome back to our lectures on fiber optics. So we started uh, the five short introduction on fiber optics by understanding what is the basic principle of fiber optics and what is the basic construction of a of an optical fiber. After that, in my last lecture, I try to explain that when light is being launched at one side of an optical fiber, it undergoes total internal reflection when it satisfies the basic condition of total internal reflection that the light should pass from the denser to rarer media and the angle of incidence should be greater than the critical angle. While understanding this, we saw that if the light just quickly we'll do a small recap what we have done in the last lecture. So if the light is launched at an angle I inside the fiber and this is the core of the fiber with refractive index N1 and this is cladding of the fiber with refractive index N2. And we already saw that in order to that the ray moves from tensor to rare media N1 should be greater than N2. Because when the light strikes on core clad interface, then it moves from denser to rarer media. And when these conditions are satisfied, it undergoes total internal reflection. In the last lecture we saw, we found the limit on this angle of incidence by applying Snell's law on the first interface and the second interface of core clad interface so we have we have no control on the angle of incidence of the ray when it strikes core clad interface so but this angle this is 90 degree this angle is related to this angle and in turn this angle is related to my angle of incidence outside the fiber so in order to control the angle of incidence at core clad interface I can put a limit on the angle of incidence which my light makes with the central axis of the fiber. So in the last lecture we saw that by applying Snell's law on first interface we got and outside I take the refractive index N0 and for air later on you can uh, put N0 is equal to 1 but at present I am writing in general so I get N0 sin I is equal to N1 sin theta now for theta is equal to theta C my angle of incidence will become maximum. So I max is the maximum angle at which the light can be launched inside the fiber to undergo total internal reflection. And then we saw that we got the condition. Now we are trying to find the condition on I max. I got sin I max. This is equal to N1 by N0 sin of theta. Sorry, this is my phi c, critical angle phi c. And this, for this theta c, from this triangle, sine of theta c, I can write in terms of phi c. And this would be n naught sin 90 minus phi c, which is equal to n1 by n naught cos of phi c. This was my first equation and then by applying Snell's law on the second interface for critical angle we can write at second interface second interface I can at critical angle 
I apply cells law so I can write n1 sine phi c is equal to n2 sine 90 because at critical angle the angle of refraction is 90 degree so I get sine phi c is equal to n2 by n1 this is my equation number 2 from equation number 1 I got sine of i max is equal to n1 by n0 cos of phi c if I substitute the value of cos phi c from equation number 2 I will get n1 by n0 under root 1 minus n2 by n1 whole square by applying cos square theta is equal to 1 minus sin square theta this is equal to n1 square minus n2 square under root by n0 this is sine of i max and we found i max as sine inverse of under root n1 square minus n2 square upon n0 this was defined I defined as acceptance angle what is the meaning of acceptance angle this I proved as acceptance angle in the last lecture this is the maximum angle at which the light can be launched inside the optical fiber to undergo total internal reflection now I define another very basic property of an optical fiber as numerical aperture numerical aperture it is defined as sign of acceptance angle or maximum angle at which light can be launched inside the optical fiber to undergo total internal reflection basically numerical aperture is a measure of light gathering capacity of the fiber this is another definition of numerical aperture so I can define numerical aperture in short I'm writing as sine of I max and which is already we have proved n1 square minus n2 square by n0 this is a very basic property of an optical fiber by which an optical fiber is characterized so I can write as light gathering capacity of the fiber. We can also write numerical aperture in terms of in terms of fractional difference of refractive index this is another way of writing numerical aperture so let us introduce delta is equal to n1 square minus n2 square upon 2n1 square now for most fibers this I am defining for most fibers n1 is approximately equal to n2 so I can write delta as n1 minus n2 into n1 plus n2 upon 2n1 square now n1 plus n2 I can take equal to n1 so I get 
टू एन वन एन वन माइनस एन टू अपॉन टू एन वन स्क्वेयर दिस इज इक्वल टू एन वन माइनस एन टू अपॉन एन वन दिस इज डिफाइंड एज फ्रैक्शनल डिफरेंस इन रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स सो आई कैन राइट फ्रॉम दिस एन वन माइनस एन टू दिस इज इक्वल टू टू एन वन इन टू डेल्टा इक्वेशन वन we know that numerical aperture is equal to under root n1 square minus n2 square by n0 so i can write n1 square minus n2 square sorry here it should be n1 square minus n2 square i can write 2n1 square so delta is my fractional difference and another definition of delta which i have defined so i can write 2 n1 square delta from equation number 1 upon n not under root this is equal to n1 under root 2 delta by n not this this is just another representation of numerical aperture in terms of fractional difference of refractive index of core and clad refractive indices so numerical aperture is a very important basic property of an optical fiber which tells you the light gathering capacity of the fiber So what is the maximum light gathering capacity of a fiber is now we will try to see what are the different kinds of fiber based on the different kinds of properties as based on profile for example based on the refractive index or based on the modes or based on the materials let us see that in the next lecture